Okay, today we're going to be assembling uh, the uh, 16 RGB Blinky. Uh, the pretty straightforward. It takes some time. It's not hard, but it just takes some time because of uh, getting these uh, LEDs in correctly into 16 sets of holes is pretty tough. Uh, just time consuming, really not difficult. Um, so we've got a couple of IC sockets, got a bunch of LEDs, got a slide switch, we got a couple of mode switches, little tactile switches there. Um, these are the coin cells. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do those uh, for the default version and then later on I'll show you how I'll take them back out again, show you how to do the uh, uh, increased power option. So the first thing you're going to want to do is uh, usually you want to put in the lowest profile thing first. Uh, that would be this this little uh, power switch. Stick that in there into where it says SW1. <laughs> do not put it up here where it says prog. That's the programming header. Uh, I've had people do that. Um, pretty much holds itself in place. You don't have to worry about that too much. You might as well do the uh, the two push button switches too. Those also hold themselves in place. Um, let's get them in there. They just snap into place. And since those are all holding themselves in place, we may as well do the um, IC sockets as well. Check that the pins aren't bent. And then get those in. Now these will not hold themselves in place, so just take and bend over uh, your fingernails up here at the diagonal um, wires there. Just that one, and that one, or whichever ones you like. Doesn't matter. And then solder them in place. And a brand new soldering iron here. So let's see how this works. You see what I'm doing there? I'm not going to subject you to having to watch every solder joint here, but uh, you'll see that I'm putting my soldering iron down in a position where it contacts both the wire and the pad. Both the wire and the pad have to get up hot enough to melt the um, solder because the connection is made by creating a uh, an alloy between the, uh, the metal in the pad and the metal in the wire and the, and the solder. So you want all of those to be up high enough to melt the solder so that everything can all bond together properly and you want to put on enough solder to fully cover the pad go down through the hole to the other side and not too much because you don't want to have so much solder that it flows around and winds up covering uh, or causing a short circuit with solder going between multiple points. Uh, let's see, we also have this switch. And you also want, don't uh, don't worry so much, I've seen people really worry that they're gonna melt something with this soldering iron and they pull it right back off again as soon as the solder starts to melt. You're gonna wind up with bad solder joints there. These components are all, in fact, all modern components are designed to be able to go into an oven that is hot enough to melt solder. Um, it's called a reflow oven. So you need to keep the heat on for a second or two at least. With little pads like this you don't need too much but 
It's better to hold the heat on for a little longer, see that didn't hurt anything, than not long enough because if you try to pull it off too fast, the solder won't bond properly. You need to give it time to bond. Okay, now on these um, on these LEDs, you'll notice that one of the wires there is longer than the other. It's, it's, it's the longest. Um, that one goes into the square pad here. So what you want to do is and, and and this the line of you see that this is in these LEDs uh, the wires coming out of the LEDs here in the line those lines go radially out from the center of the blinky out like that we've had some people they're supposed to go in like this with the long wire there's the long wire in there and they stagger up, down, up, down, like that. A little tricky, but then it goes straight in like that. So you can see that the line of the wires goes out this way. The reason that's important is because we've had some people... It, it turns out that if you bend it the other way... Or, let's see if I could figure out how people wound up to manage to do this. Um, let's see. I think they want, yeah, they wound up putting it in like this, and it still, then you can see the, the, the line of the wires is going this way. Um, it, it goes like that, it's, I don't know if you can really see there. Uh, that winds up with the LEDs. I think it switches the red and the blue, or something crazy like that, when it when it actually go, it comes time to to run. So anyway, what you want to do is assemble them. I'm going to stop the camera, put the rest of the LEDs in, and then I hope that uh, it will be obvious. How you can see this is a little tricky. You get the hang of it about the time you're done. You really want to push them in. There's kind of a dent in these leads here. So push them in that far and then bend a couple of leads out so that they will stay put and while you put the rest of them in. Okay, um, just real quick. I'm going to give you... I think I put this in the instructions, in the printed instructions, but just in case. Um, hold the LED with the wires flat in line with the table. Um, the longest lead um, away from you. Bend the longest lead and the lead closest to you down. And that will set them up to properly go into the holes. Doesn't mean it's easy, but at least that's how to get them in properly. There we go. So just do them. Do all 16 of them like that. Okay, uh, I've got all the LEDs in now. Um, the thing to do now is to slowly turn the board and make sure that all of the wires, uh, it, the line of the wire points back towards the center of the board. That's the way they're supposed to be. If you've got one that's not doing that, then get it inserted wrong. Um, pull it out and put it, put it back in again the right way. I'm gonna just go ahead and solder these now. Now, it's really tough to get in there and solder these wires. Um, basically what you usually want to do is solder the ones closest to you that you can get to. It's probably fastest to uh, just do like the two on the inside, turn it, go to the go to the next LED, and then when you're done uh, getting all the way around the thing, you want to uh, well you can clip these wires off and then go around again, reaching around, or you can. 
uh, you can alternatively, well, even if you are going to do this, you should clip the wires off because you don't have to reach through the wires with the solder. Uh, you can go, but in any case, you can go around and then solder here on the outside. I'll go ahead and do that and get back to you here in a second. Okay, solder all the way around the inside. I'm going to go cut these off, just the wires that I have soldered already. Watch out because um, these wires can really fly and you don't want to hit yourself in the eye. If you're not wearing glasses, just put your finger over the top of the thing before it uh, flies into your eye. Um, you do not want to try to nip these things rough or right near the board. Doing that will really cause a lot of stress on the solder joint. Um, and may wind up with uh, a bad solder joint. That one was a little standing a little proud, so I did nip that one a little off. Anyway, go on around and clip the rest of them off. Okay, I've got all the LEDs soldered in place, and uh, the lead's clipped off. Eh. You want to take a close look. You want to uh, not have the lead sticking up too much, because if you don't cover this with something, they will catch on your clothes. Um, it's not a bad idea to cover the back of uh, of one of these blinkies with something non-conductive, like perhaps duct tape or something. Um, of course, that doesn't apply if you use the AA battery option, because then you've got a AA battery sticking out the back. But uh, sh these things can short out against like metal buttons or what have you, and uh, uh, that can crash the processor and. Uh, cause other sorts of issues. Anyway, um, I guess the, the battery options, uh, I'm going to do the uh, coin cell batteries first. Uh, here's the holder. and You'll notice the holder has got um, a square bit on it and the ink on the board shows the square bit there. So that square bit lines up with that and it goes on there and there's two of these. Now you can flip these over and get them down if you're careful you can get them down onto the table and then um, have the thing still sticking out there these take a little bit more heat than most of the other components but and a lot more solder because they're big pads solder those down all four of those points be careful not to uh, touch the soldering iron onto the LEDs so you'll melt the LED. Anyway, and that's that. Um, that's all the soldering. Uh, now I need to put the chips in place. You do want to go over and make sure that you check your work. Make sure that all of the um, all of the solder joints are soldered. All the ones that have components in them. Obviously there's some parts, on, no matter how you assemble this, them, there's some parts that aren't uh, populated um, and you also want to make sure that there's no solder that's uh, let me let me create a solder bridge here um, if you get too much solder you get something like that Let's see if you can see that there right there you see how there there's a uh, solder stuck between two leads that will cause the blinking not to work and you can take care of that by usually you can you can lift a little solder off of that and just keep doing that and flip it off onto the table until there now you're back to should be working again um, and yeah see now it's 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 fine now again uh, that's the sort of thing you have to look out for um, or unsoldered joints are a problem too let me get the chips and batteries for this. Okay, uh, now there's two chips that you need. One of them is a uh, 7400 uh, series um, logic chip, and the other one is uh, a little microcontroller. Um, it should have a sticker on it, and it's a little dragonfly on it there. And the one, the Processor is an ATtiny84. I don't know if you can see there, but it says ATtiny84 on the green board underneath that ship there. 
and this you kind of have to bend the leads a little bit until it goes in properly like that. The um, sticker should be so that the dragonfly is facing the top of the board. Uh, pin 1 is on this side. You can see that in the marking. Uh, there's a little notch drawn on the marking there. This one doesn't have a sticker on it, but it does have the notch. Um, so you'll see there, there's a little notch there that matches the notch on here. You do have those have to line up. If they don't line up, then you're going to have problems. It's not going to work right. Um, needs to go in. Make sure you push it in all the way. If it feels like it, maybe sometimes the a lead will buckle and that won't go in to the uh, to the uh, chip holder correctly. If that happens, you're going to uh, have problems. Uh, so usually you can look along the edge here and you can see if one of the chips is bent under or bent out or something like that. Uh, in any case, um, assuming everything went properly, you put these, uh, oh look at that, I've got a, I've got a problem here. The, uh, my battery holder was soldered in slightly wrong and this is sticking out. So let me just heat this up a little. And hopefully I can push that in without burn. Okay, I got it. Um, now the batteries go in. Uh, this is this is a release catch here. When you want to get the battery out, you have to pull that out, and the battery will pop out. So you put it in to the plastic end and rotate it and snap it in. Do the same thing with the other battery. It goes in with the that side down and the writing side up. So you get both batteries in there. Um, while I'm uh, while I'm here, I'm going to show you how to get these batteries out because some people have trouble with that. If you push on that release, the batteries should just pop right out. You may sometimes have to do a little pry prying with them with a pocket knife or something, but they should just pop right out if you push this hard enough. Turn it over and uh, turn on the power switch. Now there's a test mode here that you can use. If you hold down the bottom button and turn it on, it go comes up in test mode where it lights up all of the red LEDs in order. And then when it gets done it does green and then it does blue. So you can use that to test this. If, if, you, if it's blinking along and it goes red, red, red and then suddenly it does blue or something like that, or if two LEDs come on at the same time here uh, there's something wrong. Uh, if it if blue and red are switched, you got one of those LEDs in the wrong direction. Um, that's pretty that that was pretty common. That's why you have to make sure that the LEDs uh, the, they're lined up uh, to to the center of the board. Um, if two of them come on at the same time, then there's a short somewhere. Um, if there's a whole lot of things messed up, it's either you really messed up the LEDs or more likely there's a slight problem on the chip since a small number of uh, leads on, on these chips drive a large number of LEDs because remember there's not just 16 LEDs here each one of those got three in there so there's actually 48 LEDs here uh, so this, this small number of pins is running 48 LEDs one of these pins being like disconnected will cause there to be many uh, LEDs that don't come on properly um, so that's that's general troubleshooting. To actually run the thing, you turn it off, turn it back on again, then it comes back up in its normal mode, and you can run through the you can run through the modes by clicking either up or down. If you get to this mode here, where you you can see it's it's counting in binary. That's mode one, two, three, four, five, five. Or four, three, two, one. If you get to the one where all of them are on, that's uh, the demo mode. And in that mode, it uh, it does each pattern for about a minute, and then switches to the next pattern. And it could just continuously cycles through patterns. So there you go. Uh, now I'm going to do the uh, uh, the more power Scotty option, where we replace these two coin cells with a double A cell. 
Okay, um, if you're not, if you're going to be using the quote more power Scotty option, um, you will have uh, one of these little power converter boards. This takes anything from I think one to five volts and converts it up to five volts. Um, the input power over here, there's one, it says in minus and in plus. It's on these two tabs and the output. This is designed to take a USB plug, but we're not going to use that. Uh, it says five volts and ground there. Those are what we're using. Uh, this goes in here where it says in plus and in minus and plus five volt and ground. So this goes in this location here. Uh, the holes don't quite line up. This was originally designed for a slightly different power converter board. Um, what you're going to do is take some of these wires that you clipped off of the LEDs and stick them in here. This is a little tricky to do. Um, just line it up like that and just put it down like that so that the wire is just sticking out a little bit. Oops, sorry. Excuse me. And we're just going to solder this down. Let it cool for a second. There we go. We have our lead and do the other three wires the same way. And now remember we're doing we're not don't use these big holes here on this side and don't use the two inner ones, we're using only the two outer ones. That one is ground, the one that says GND. Doesn't matter if the wire flips off to one side. We'll straighten it out later. And then another one where it says plus five volts. Okay. There we go. Now that's our power converter board with wires on it. Now what you need to do is bend these leads so that you can get them lined up there and also up here. And we're just going to squish this down right on to you know, push down on it so that these wires stick out. I'm going to bend these out a little bit. Then uh, solder this in place. Don't be stingy with the solder here. These are big pads and they need a lot of solder. And <laughs> soldering tips getting a little weak or a little loose. There's a brand new soldering iron and it's probably breaking in a little bit. There we go. Alright. Alright, and I will clip these off. The other component that you will have is a little Capacitor. Capacitor is not strictly necessary, but uh, I found that sometimes um, this thing didn't boot up properly, or it booted up really slowly. Um, capacitor is right there. The board has a positive marking on it. The capacitors that I generally have been supplying are not polarized, so don't worry about it. These are just little ceramic. 10 microfarad ceramics so it doesn't matter which way they go in if you for some reason are using an electrolytic or tantalum or something like that oops, come on then um, then you do have to make sure that the positive lead gets lined up properly I can't see that thing there we go so we're set of the capacitor in place the capacitor is just for filtering. It it uh, helps smooth the power out if it's you know when it's coming out of that 
power converter could have a little bit of ripple on it. And then we just need to put the battery holder in. Now there's a positive there and a negative over here. The negative is the side with the spring on it. You may notice that uh, these leads don't quite line up. Again, this was originally designed for a slightly different battery holder. So what we're going to do is we're going to take and bend the lead on doesn't really matter but I've been bending the positive lead a little ways away then put the negative one in place kinda take note of where you know that's bending maybe a sixteenth of an inch millimeter or two past the end there get your pliers and bend it sharp right there so so you've got it doing something like that and should just drop right into place. There you go. Bend the leads out a little bit. Flip it over. Do a little soldering. It gets a little tippy at this point. There we go. Clip those leads off. Should be ready to go now. Let me get a battery. And I put the battery in place here. Turn it on, and there we go. If it doesn't come on, there's a little LED there on the uh, um, on the power converter board. If that's not coming on, then probably there's something shorted out on the board. Um, these things have some protection, and if it won't turn on, it's because you're trying to draw too much power from it. That should not happen if things are wired properly. If it if this LED, little red LED is not coming on, then you need to check to see if there's shorts. Uh, probably the most likely thing is that you've got these chips in, like, backwards they're in the wrong sockets um, you've got the you know the microcontrollers in the bottom and the 7400s in the top uh, something like that or uh, the notches facing the wrong way stickers upside down uh, we had a couple of cases where somebody got given two um, microcontrollers so they had one top and bottom um, so that'll cause trouble too because these things don't these two chips have their power and ground going in different places so if you try to plug them into the wrong sockets it just won't work the the circuit wouldn't work anyway but it also shorts out the power anyway that's that's it we are done and ready to put a tag in there and uh, hang it off your clothing <laughs>